right, I am back. Got that figured out. Ooh, Dylan, I got back at a perfect time to see Dylan just fire in that 1-9 combo, setting the tune, first rack down. All right, another event as the qualifier, what this is for. We have the Pennsylvania Open. Put this in your calendar. This is going to be an amazing event hosted by Matchroom. Very excited for that to happen. Also, things to look out for if you are in the area of Parkersburg, West Virginia. Uh, Frank will be down with his stream and uh, for this epic matchup. All right. We are now in rack number two. Still in the break. Both one and the cue ball were risking going in the side there, but avoided it. Dry break again. Dylan isn't just for how powerful his break is. I'm just waiting for that moment for it to click into place because then it's going to be very dangerous for any of his opponents. Jason has to do quite a breach. I want to get his extension or a bridge. The extension. Maybe both. I would need both. So, let's see. Nah, he doesn't. It's still a reach, though. This isn't easy. It's just a safety. Try to keep that... He was trying to keep that cue ball behind the six. Or even just... Put the one on the rail, because I'm not... It would be tight for the one to go past the seven. So that could have been his plan as well. Position for a back cut in the two in the top left. Just use some center low ball on that. Overcut it a bit and scratch it. Oh, I thought it scratched. Okay. It oh it did it did scratch. Okay. <laughs> that did happen. Alright, Jason coming in. Pretty open table. Be the moment to tie it up. Now, it looks like he might be trying to play... What is, is he trying to set up for the 4-9 combo, you guys think? No, okay. Because I don't see this 4 going past the 7, but... I apparently do not see the pockets well on the stream. Alright, Marty McGee... Marty McGee. <laughs> Trent and Marty took down Nick Papa George 7-3. Marty moves on with the tournament. All right, the seven isn't in the best position here either, so this leave on the five isn't... He's, I mean, obviously he didn't want to go there, but... Jason approaching the table here. Cue ball is on the rail, which the distance, the distance definitely helps. That can be a great safety in itself. Just a lot of distance and putting a cue ball on the rail or the object ball on the rail. Something good for beginners to remember. Something good I need to remember. 
unfortunate bump on that eight. So that made, if he didn't clip that eight, he would have gotten on the underside of the six, having a nice, easy side cut. This seven, I don't see this seven going, or if it does go, it's going to be a very close hit. I can get you guys to that overhead here in a moment. Make sure. And I can't get sight on this. All right, so he might, he, I think he's going to be planning on a safety here because I don't see this really going in. I'm trying to get you guys a good overhead. Which I Oh, look at that. Oh, man. What an attempt. What an attempt. That was great. Nice safety return by Dylan. And does he get the bump on the nine? No, he gets good coverage, though. Hmm. Jason can still see the ball. Oh, he attempts to bank the seven. He might have been attempting the nine. I'm trying to find one thing, so I'm just slightly distracted. But he does get a nice... Oh, thank goodness. One second, guys. All right, guys, I Frank came back to rescue me on that question. And we have Jason to the table. Seven in the top right corner, and it just jars in, man, a case of the rattles, as I was told last night. An unfortunate rattle here. All right, Dylan, that, so we were talking earlier about how that speed, when the ball is in the pocket like that, it can be really hard to, to even judge or... Yes, I, was, I didn't have my phone on. Yeah, oh, okay. <laughs> so I did approve, yeah, mm -hmm. I figured. But yeah, you guys, I'll be good. Have your phone. Yeah. Have phone. All right, Dylan capitalizing on that, making it 2-0. If you guys have any questions or want to um, want any information on some of our upcoming events, you can ask me. The chat is open, just in case you needed a reminder.
All right. It is 2-0 currently. The players are keeping track of their score themselves out there, so it will update for you guys shortly. Still into break. That one is just that one wants to go in the side pocket each time, but it's just a tad bit off. Just the tiniest bit, and he just needs to find that sweet spot to send it so soaring in there. But this 469, messy, messy, messy down here. The one does go past the eight. Two can go on the side. I wonder, I just want to, I wish I could be inside their head and I wonder what their plan is. This nine, it doesn't look like it goes, let me get back to an overhead here. So it looks like that six is blocking the nine from going and that you really need to be thinking about position on the three ball and the four, from the three to the four. What, what would you guys do if you're, just to keep in mind, I am an amateur place, player. I am not a pro. I will probably say things that are not the right shot, and I accept that. But looking to learn. So if you have better plans, please do not hesitate. All right, looking like he's going to follow one rail or two rails. Trying to keep that, maintain that angle, but that eight did kind of roll in the way of that there. I think he just wanted to save that four ball, probably do it to uh, send the four to the back end of the table and hide the cue behind it was the original plan, would be my guess. Not sure what his plan is, but if he's planning on jumping, that's a very far jump here. No. A kick. Because there is a chance the nine ball could have gone. And look at this. I thought he was going to tuck it behind the five. Close. It still doesn't leave uh, Dylan an easy shot. Any means. Dylan, nice return safe. Locks up the cue ball on the seven. It's not super frozen on the ball, as you'll see here, but that nine does help too. I think he might have enough to go rail first and kick the four. Looking like a mass A. Trying to curve around the nine ball, hit the rail first. Oh no, he hit the four dead on. Was not hoping to bump that eight ball because that made it go closer in the direction of the pocket. Or, I mean, it was close to going in. All right, Dylan back up to the table. Unfortunate bumps going around. Look at this. Bump the five and snuck behind the nine ball. He did not think he was going to be kicking, putting himself in a position to kick. Sometimes we do it to ourselves. All right. He's looking at the one rail kick here just to just to get a good hit and leave him leave it sticky for Jason. Or or a solid attempt. Only question, did it sell out the opportunity for Jason to take advantage of this rack? I, I definitely think Jason is gonna can run this. Definitely. This shot here is probably well. Oh no. Well, womp womp. Unfortunate. Jason misjudging that cut and sending the cue ball in the top right corner. It happens, this shows it happens to everybody in any stage of pool. Especially if you if you don't take the time to think about it because it, it, it was a pretty easy cut. But it can happen that fast. 
So Dylan returns with ball in hand to the table on a very easy run out for his caliber of play. Goes straight in on the seven here. With just enough angle to squeak out a one rail position. He plays beautifully in the side. As he sets up for the nine in the bottom right. Beautiful fluid out by Dylan, making it 3 0. All right, we're getting ready. Rack four. This is a race to seven. The score will be updating shortly. There it goes. And yeah, this break is really hurting Dylan today because he. The way he's been shooting, he would be running out so many racks. And I know it's probably eating him up about this break. Nice little slice by Jason, but he bumps the two and puts it in a position on the four where it's unmakeable. So a nice little safety here, just super skim the two, barely touch it, send the cue ball up table. I think is gonna be the move he does. Or that was better than my plan. Does he? Nope, Dylan does not have a clear shot. He would have to manipulate this cue ball. I think it would be a jump if I'm not mistaken. A lot of distance between the balls, but and the and the object ball is on the rail. Very curious to see what he does here. Oh, beautiful kick. Oh my word. Let's see that again. I hope I got it. Oh, this will be the test. Did I, was I too hasty? I got it sort of, okay. I was a little bit too fast. All right, he got an unfortunate leave for that nice shot he made, but made good contact with the three ball. Jason does have a shot here with three in the corner in the side. He's gonna have to avoid. He has to make up his mind if he wants to bump the five or try to avoid the five. I would try to avoid the five if possible. I don't think it's possible. Yeah, or just barely bump it because that five not being on the rail was really beneficial. Nice slice, good tempo and speed. Doesn't leave much except a bank or a safe. Both doable. I like the bank. I'm a little bit more of an aggressive player. And this looks like a very easy setup for him. But the safe was smarter. Oh no. Oh no. It rolled out. Now this is... This is distance, and it's pretty straight, but Dylan is a very solid Oh, he tried to stop the ball from that distance. Very difficult to do straight in. Guard the pocket. Jason returns to the table. Oh, 
Now the five is is past the side, so this shouldn't be an issue. But you can't hit center ball on this, or else if you're going with it in the in the corner there. Or that did look center, didn't it? Maybe low. All I know is there is a there is a way to scratch on that shot to be aware of if you're an amateur. <laughs> Right, Jason getting the tempo of the table. Hoping to get his name up on the board with this rack. Everything looks good. He's just got to take his time. I talked about tempo with the last with the last set or the last match of if the if your opponent doesn't have the same tempo of, as you. Pretty important to pay attention to make sure you're not trying to match your opponent's tempo. It's something I've struggled with, uh, thinking I have to keep up and match their tempo. Just play your own tempo, and you see Jason doing that here. Nice stroke there. And he does it. Gets on the board. Three to one. I do believe, if my memory is correct, Jason broke did break the first rack, and I can't remember if it was, if it was, he made a ball or not. But let's see what rack four has for him. Just to give you an update, uh, Marty Trent and Marty is playing Jason Trigo. Currently on table one, Jason is up 1-0 with that match. All right, so we did make at least one ball, I heard. One, two balls. So the one and two ball are down, so three is his next ball, which is hidden by the seven here. Uh, not sure, is he? Yeah, I would hope. I think he's going to be going for a push here. I don't think he has a shot on this. Overhead for you guys. Well, he did make a good hit out of it. Ah, this, this looks a little... This looks like a setup for a 3-9 carom shot to me. Aim for the three ball to do a combo 3-6, but in reality, your cue ball is naturally going to be hitting this nine, and you can take advantage of that. Okay, so he was just going for the combo. It seemed, I don't know, he was, looked like it was, the nine was projecting to go near there. Dylan does hide him behind the four ball. You kind of saw it from the last view a bit more. So Jason is either going to have to masse this or kick it. I think he's like, gearing up for a masse. It's just a little bit of a curve. Not enough to like really bear down, but you see with how much English he put on it, he did have to have some type of spin. He does still have sight on the four. Although, it was a bit of a clencher here about if that cue ball was going to hide or not. Oh, just misjudged that back cut on the floor. Now, this does leave a cut for Dylan, but if this is no easy cut. I love watching these shots from this upper angle because from the upper angle you see the cut is makeable. I don't think he's going, he's saving. It's, it's, it's a difficult cut, but it could be done. And what a beautiful save, Dylan. 
That is textbook great safe in that situation. Jason's going to have a one rail kick trying to put the four in the side. Or he might have been trying to send it up table with that, the amount of oomph put behind that. It does give him a pretty good safety. I don't think the Q goes by the six. All right, Dylan is getting his jump Q out. Beautiful. See that again. Let's see if I got it this time. I did. Beautiful shot, Dylan. He makes the next shot. That's on the six ball here. Floats forward for the seven in the opposite corner. And he's just going to kind of pop it over or slide it over for the eight in the side. Used a little bit of outside English to keep that cue ball center table, it looked like, if not just center ball with good speed and he makes the nine ball to make it four to one All right, we're getting ready. Rack five, here we come. Still in the break. Hopefully he gets this break and makes that ball. That one ball was, was playing around with that side pocket. Each rack he had. Let's see if he has it adjusted. Oh, so he went with a different break this time. And just no justice. That cue ball just... Went in the top left corner. Luckily, the one didn't get tied up with a nine because that could have happened with how they were rolling. But the balls are pretty spread out, so Jason has a good opportunity to run this rack. Right, a little tricky situation here for Jason. Oh no. Skimmed a bit of that four ball and it just it went straight into the corner like it had eyes. This is not the situation Jason wanted to be in, giving Dylan ball in hand with six balls on the table all spread out. Ooh, but, wow. Yeah, Dylan shaking off that arm because that four ball almost didn't make it in. Right, so you see him taking his time a little bit after that one, making sure he has 
you know, everything together because that was not like him the way that four ball went with ball in hand. So he usually has a very quick tempo, but he didn't want to be too quick with that one for good reason. Slides that over. He did want to be on the underside of the seven so he can get above the eight, just not too much because he needs to get once again behind that for the nine up top. Dylan makes this look so easy. You, just like how you see in the Olympics, the people, people who have uh, not perfected the game, but you could master it. They, they are definitely considered a master in the game at this point. They make it look so easy, as he did right there. Finishing that rack, making it 5-1. Trying to see what kind of graphics we have here in between racks. We are now in rack seven. Did I miss? I must have missed one or done a rack twice. My apologies to anybody listening. This does take a moment for the scores to update. All right, Dylan dry break again. Face into the table with a shot on the one. And he just didn't quite get it there, giving Dylan an opportunity back. Now the table itself isn't too bad, just a couple of tricky areas. The two ball, like the two to three is, is a spot to be wary of with that two being in a traffic the high traffic area. Perfect angle on that. Uh, Ralphie, let me check for you. Uh, that would have been... Give me a moment, I'll try. Well, Ralphie, I actually don't know. I have too many other stuff going on to check the bracket at this second. I have it in front of me, though. The mouse is just so terrible for me to figure out. I know it just happened. I think it was um, uh, uh, Jeremy Seaman. Yeah, Jeremy Seaman was the one who put Jason on the B side, I believe. Yep, so uh, Jeremy beat him 7-3. And just an update, Marty, uh, Trenton Marty is up 2-1 to one against Jason. Uh, that would be Jason Trigo. Nice position for Jason to be in right here. To roll forward on the six a tiny bit or just stop it there even would be good for the seven ball. Perfect stop. And this, once again, either stop, you could, I would just stop this ball once again. He could draw it over to the side, to the long rail. Uh, that depends on the angle that shows on the, it's, here it looks straight in, but as you see, Naturally, go can easily go over to the side to control your speed. I am struggling to speak today. Sorry for anybody.
All right, Jason completes that rack five to two. Shout out to another one of our sponsors. Oh, oh wait. Okay, that's not. But that was not a sponsor, but I'm in the right area. <laughs> okay. Five two. We are going into rack eight. I'm not tricked this time. Jason to break. Oh, that eight was so close to going in the side, but the five went in the opposite side. One lays up nicely and everything wanted to go in the side here. It does look like the two might be a little bit in a funny position. But he could do a carom from the two to three when he gets there. So in order to do that, he would just stop this ball here. But in, when you do a carom shot, you also want to think that the ball you're hitting first, you're going to want to hit that next. So uh, the position is something you cannot neglect. Beautiful. Bounces it just enough, I think, for him to... Okay, he has a couple options. He could try to cut it in the side. Uh, there is a bank and obviously a good opportunity to save here as well. If he does cut it in the side, he could also bump the four ball. That could be an, a good two-way opportunity. Nice slice there. That's pretty straight in on the four ball. Luckily, the four ball is in a way where you can cheat the pocket in so many ways to manipulate the cue ball position. There's one rail, low right, so about five o'clock English. Avoid skimming that seven ball. Nicely on the six here. And as long as he just stays above the seven ball, uh, naturally he's going to come down for the eight. Floating this with a little bit of high. Add bit of right to draw it away from this uh, the corner. And make sure he doesn't slam it because that nine ball could have blocked his position. He did that speed beautifully. There's one rail up. Perfect position for the nine ball here. And he closes the gap even further. Five to three. Oh, that's not the one. Just a little shot of the pool hall here. Come on down, guys. Plenty of places, uh, plenty in action. Oh my goodness, plenty of tables and action. All right. Where is five to three? We are on rack nine. Jason 
Jason to break again. Let's see if he can get another solid break like last time. Oh, one goes straight in. Three gets a little funny on the six, and the two ball heads up table. Nine ball is laid up in the side here. Uh, so that is something to keep in mind. It's a wild nine. a safety don't believe Dylan has light on that he might be able to see just the edge of that two ball I think he does yeah just enough to hit the ball not to make it so he does safety hides the cue ball behind the five here Jason can do a one rail kick in between the four to five there is a little bit of a window there And the kick and stick he does, but it ended in the side. That is a tough shot to do. This three ball overhead for you guys. Okay, that does look like it goes clean. Looking at this four, I mean, the table looks pretty nice. I don't know. This is not a fun position for this three ball, but I think this is the toughest shot he has. Oh, it hung. Oh. All right, Dylan coming in three, nice and ready to be pocketed. Comes up behind the four, but in the opposite corner. Probably gonna pop it to the rail and over. Nice speed. That's, definitely has the speed of the table. Be good right now, I'd say. Put some inside on that to tone it back. Two rails around the seven. This looks does have an angle, just probably to go one rail, I would say, but he's he might go two. All right, I guessed it right. He went one rail down. A little bit of a distance away from the eight, but still very makeable shot for Dylan here. It's beautifully on the nine. Which means Dylan is on the hill currently six to three. Alright, rack 10, here we come. Dylan to break. I know he's just hoping that this gets figured out. He's in a good position here to take control of the set. Oh, geez. Do you see it just keeps hitting that one side of the pocket, that one point? It's been hitting that each time. I'm almost, I'm frustrated for Dylan. <laughs> even though he's in the lead. All right, Jason, very nice, easy shot on the one ball to start off the rack. It's a stop shot. It's a perfect angle for the two here to go one rail, might hit the second rail for the three ball position. Gonna put a bit of inside about like two o'clock.
Or maybe not. He might not be doing that. Yeah, he used left on that. I would have used right, but I think he didn't want any risk of bumping that nine ball. Unfortunately, he did hang up the two, so this gives Dylan a shot back at the table, which is a pretty open table right now. Wow. Dylan shot that perfectly, I would say. That is a shot that is one of my weakest. <laughs> that specific one. Four does go past the five. He's just going to draw back. Oh, sorry. Follow forward. Here's where I think he might draw back. I don't know. I'm going to stop guessing what he would do. Because I see the overhead view, and the overhead and the side for this view definitely gives different ideas. And both are different than what we see at the table, but Dylan really taking advantage here. The 7 to 8 is a big shot. I would think some low left. And, oh, nope, he's going high. I, me personally, I don't have the stroke to to be able to get down here for that. <gasps> no. Oh, it died behind the nine. Yeah. He's smiling at himself. Could have been in so many places. Jumped off the table, unfortunately. That was a close jump and difficult to begin with. A good attempt, but this gives Jason a chance back. A chance back to close the gap. All right. Jason getting it done. Six to four. Track 11 about to begin. The update, Trenton Marty and Jason Trigo. Jason be, uh, came up three to two. All right, Jason with a dry break. A nice safety move by Dylan there, putting the key, uh, one ball behind the three nine. Putting the one ball behind the nine in the queue in that cluster there. I don't know if Jason is taking a break currently. Nope, there he goes, getting his jump cue. It seems. 
go over here and take a look at this. View from that side. did not get there. Oh, I did not see the two ball back there. I got really confused for a second. <laughs> Pretty open here. Six ball does go by the seven. Five to six, four. Wants to get behind it beautifully. Backing up to draw back. He did. Okay, so I was commentating last night as well, and it looked like he made a clear decision that he wanted to stay under that five ball. Because that's a shot where, like, if you let loose, you could come up and put that five in the side. And when you are in between that, you end up in between, like, literally the middle of both shots. So that was a great example of, like, making up your mind of which side you want to be on and executing that. Good position from that six to seven. Gonna try to get behind the nine ball. Oh, and that seven was playing with our emotions as to whether or not it was gonna go in. It did decide to give still in a good position on the eight. And the moment to see if the race is over in this shot. Dylan takes it over seven to four and moves on. Congratulations to Jason for getting this far. Until next time for Jason.